We're going to be creating a resolver to allow users to log in to our API. Now to keep users logged in, we're going to be using sessions and we're going to be using the express session library. We're also going to be storing these session data in Redis using the connect Redis library. So if you don't already have Redis installed and up and running on your computer, I'd recommend go ahead and doing that now. So we're going to start by installing some dependencies, the two that I mentioned, and then also we're going to install IO Redis, which is the Redis client that we're going to use. And then we're also going to install cores so we don't have any problems with cookies. And then when this is done installing, we're going to have to install the types for it. So we're going to say yarn add as a dev dependency, the types for express session, connect Redis, IO Redis, and cores. All right, so next up, we're going to go ahead and add the middleware. So in our index.ts file, uh, we can add the session middleware. And where you actually put this doesn't matter as much as long as it's before this guy. So before you apply middleware uh, on Apollo server, you want to add the session middleware. And the session middleware that we're going to add, I'm going to copy a config that I've used in a project before. And I'll link this in the description if you want to copy paste this as well. Um, so here uh, we'll go over what each one of these parts is in a second. I uh, just want to mention the important part about having this come first is we want the session to be applied before we actually get to our resolvers. So if we have this uh, before it, like up here, it's going to have our resolver get called before we actually get the session, which is important. We want session first. That, all right, so now we have uh, this. We need to install some things, or not install, but import some things. So we're going to import from session. And I just call it session, I guess. And uh, the few parts of this, first off, we have to pass in a store. This is where everything is being uh, stored, at least the session data. We're going to be putting that in Redis. We need to import this. Redis store, which we get from connect uh, session or connect Redis. Here's the name for our cookie. So I'm calling my cookie QID. You can pretty much call it whatever you like. Uh, secret, we can just have a secret for our cookie. Ideally, you should put this in your uh, environment file and import it in, but I'm just going to have a hard coded string for simplicity's sake. Uh, these I like to turn off just so we don't constantly create a new session for a user unless we change something. Um, and then here's just some properties on the cookie, making sure it's HTTP only so JavaScript can't access it. And then uh, secure means it only works in HTTPS, so we only want this to happen when we're in production. And then I'm saying the cookie should last for seven years. Uh, you'll notice I'm casting it to any here. I think that's just because we had some problems with the types. Uh, I'll get rid of it and see if we have a problem. All right, so let's import Redis store as well. Um, and I said connect Redis was the name. Uh, and if we take a look at the docs for this, what we have to actually do is pass in uh, to a function to create the Redis store. So we're going to say, I'll call it connect Redis. And here I'm going to say Redis store is equal to connect Redis passing in the session. I'm also just going to move it inside of here and I'll move it right above here. Uh, and then we need to create this, this uh, variable called Redis. Uh, in the source directory, I'm going to call create a file called Redis and I'm going to export const Redis is equal to a new Redis. And Yep, we're just going to import this, not from Redis, but from IO Redis. And we're going to say this. Now we could uh, put a connection string in here if uh, we didn't like the default, but the default connection string is going to work uh, to be able to connect to Redis on our computer. Um, so I'm now just going to import this over here. Um, so as you can see over here, I'm just importing Redis from that Redis file that we just created. And uh, this is the thing that the type it doesn't like. So we're just going to say as any there. Okay, so now that we have the uh, session middleware added, 
we are now going to be able to access this in the request object. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, actually not here, when we create the Apollo server, I'm going to say context. And we're just going to say request. Uh, so what we're doing here is we can pass in a function to the context key. And this is going to create our context, which we can access in the resolver. So Apollo server gives us access to the request object. This is from Express. Um, and we can access the session data based on this. So now in our context, we have this request object we can access in our resolvers. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to do was add cores real quick. So I'm going to say app.use cores. And let's go ahead and import cores from cores. We're going to say credentials is true. And then I believe, what is it, origin. Here I'm going to say HTTP dash dash localhost 3000. So this is the host that I expect my front end to be at. Um, so usually when I'm doing a React project, usually it's going to be on port 3000. So I just default it to that. Um, so that's good. Let's go ahead and now create the resolver to actually log in the user. So I'm going to create a new file called login.ts. And I'm just going to copy our register resolver, paste it in here as a starting point. So I'm going to rename this to login resolver. I'm going to get rid of the query. I'm going to rename this to login. And so we can create our own argument here if we wanted to. And we could create an input type or we could just create two arguments. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just create two arguments. And yeah, I was thinking I might reuse what we have here, but nah. So I'll call the first one is going to be email. And this is going to be email, which is a string. And then password. Um, and then login's going to return a user. And I'm going to say if the user logs in incorrectly, we're going to return null. So I'm going to say my GraphQL type is possibly nullable by saying nullable is true here. Get rid of the imports that are unused up there. So now the first thing that I'm going to do is try to find a user. And we're fetching the user based off of the email. And if we do not have a user, we're going to return null. Now, I usually don't return what the actual error is uh, when I do logging in, just so you don't give the person information about what they did or could, they could fish for users. But if you want to, you could throw the error here and put, hey, we could not find a user if you want to. So I'm just going to return null. Uh, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the passwords. So we're going to say const to valid, and we're going to say bcrypt.compare. Uh, and we need to pass in the string which is the password we get, and then user.password, which is hashed. So if it's valid, or really if it's not valid, we're going to return null as well. So if it made it through both of these checks, we found a user, and they put in the right password, so they are good to go. So what we can do here is we can actually add or send them back a cookie. So the way we do this is we need to access the context, and we need to access the request object instead of session for them. So how do we access the context in uh, type GraphQL? So we're going to use the at context decorator here. And then we're going to say context or CTX, we could call it. And then we need to create the type for ours. I'm going to call mine my context. And we need to create this type. So over here, I'm going to create a new folder, which I'm just going to call types. And inside of that, I'm going to say mycontext.ts. And I'm going to export an interface called mycontext. And so we have one thing in our context right now, a thing called request. And that is from Express. 
and this is going to be called request uppercase. So here we're setting the type from express with the uppercase R there. Um, and so now we can import it over here. Uh, so we're getting it from my contacts that we just created. Uh, now we can access this and type GraphQL is going to allow us to access it by this decorator. All right, so now we can say context and you can see we have the request object on there and we can say session and we're gonna save the user ID on there. And uh, let's see, I think it tells us if it's possibly undefined. Uh, I'm gonna assume it is defined here because we added it in our middleware. Um, and now the, us doing this here is gonna send back a cookie. And so we're now ready to test this out and see if we got everything correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yarn start here. And I need to first create a user where I remember my password. So here is where I register a user last. And I can't remember if I actually registered this user or not with this password, we'll give it a try. Um, the other thing to note is I'm gonna keep my log open here because uh, and I'm an application and this is the dev tools for Chrome, cookies, localhost, so I can see if a cookie gets added. Uh, so let's create a new mutation. And I'm going to refresh this. We're going to say login. Oh, you know what? That's right. I need to actually add this. So login resolver. All right, so restart already. That was fast. Nice. And now it has access to login. All right, so our email, I called it Bob. Bob2. And let's get the first name. Let's get just everything. Okay, make it pretty. And let's see if it worked now. So we get a user back. And then we also see in the logs or in the dev tools that I have a cookie back called QID. Now the other thing is if this did not work for you, if you click on the cog right here, you want to make sure if you go to the setting right here, request.credentials, that it does not say omit here. Uh, I believe it's omit by default. I was actually expecting this to fail, but it just ended up working. Uh, so it looks like mine was include by default, or I might have switched it sometime before and I forgot I did. Um, but yeah, so make sure you add credentials dot, or request.credentials and say include by in the settings, and you should get a cookie set. Um, all right, so there's one last thing that I want to do real quickly, and that is uh, fetch a user based off of that. So we're going to create a resolver called me. And the me resolver is a real simple one. And I'm going to actually copy from the mutation because it's going to be a query. So I'm going to call it me. It's going to return a user. It can also sometimes return null, so we're going to say nullable there. And all that does is it looks at the current uh, session and returns a user if it exists. All right, so we're going to say context. And we're going to say if context.request.session.userID. So remember when our login over here, we set the user ID. So we're going to check if the user ID exists. If it does not, we're going to return null. Otherwise, we're going to fetch that user. And we can just say find one and pass in the user ID. All right, we'll give that a save. So now, and again, this is a query. Actually, did I rename it to me? No, I didn't. So this should be me resolver. And the other thing about the uh, resolver here is I can say what it's gonna return. We're gonna return a promise user or null. And let's see what it doesn't like. Oh, it's possibly gonna return undefined. 
So that's fine. I'll say undefined there. And I believe GraphQL will cast undefined to null. So we should be all right there. So what this will do now is when I actually have a cookie set like this, I can say me or refresh me first name, last name, email. And we can actually get who the current user is. So in this case, it's that Bob dude. All right, so that is how you can create a login resolver and basically persist the logged in user with a cookie, uh, storing the use session data in Redis. So what's going on here is when we say request.session user ID, it's actually gonna create a session in Redis and it's gonna persist that. So when we make a request, it's gonna read our cookie and it's going to tell us that we have this user ID and we can look up the user based on that. And so in the future, we can do authentication based on whether we have a user ID and whether we can fetch a user based on that.